looking. There we go. Okay. All right. Yes. Just what we wanted. All right. Let me also pull up the stream so I can at least sometimes glance at the comments. <sighs> I'll close out my rewatch of the Roblox Oof video for my like sixth time. <laughs> oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yep. Yep. All right. Let me tweet this tasty link real quick. Uh, where is it? There we go. And paste. Good. All right. Hello, everybody. Uh, uh, yes, they're they're filing in. I can see it. Um, yeah. So the the TLDR for what's going on right now is uh, the last time I did one of these streams. Let me reposition the mic so I sound a little better, just like a smidge. <laughs> Let me just. Is this fun for everybody? <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so the last time I did any Tears of the Kingdom streaming, it was not on my the, the file that you all have been following. Or I, I assume some of you have been following. It was uh, on this, my uh, generously named 100% file, uh, <laughs> where I've been playing just for my personal pleasure since the game came out. Uh, this is the file where I've already beaten the game at least once, etc., etc. Uh, and we're here today because we just, like, two days ago recorded a detailed diatribe, uh, and then I spent all of yesterday editing it, and I was like, it's almost done. It's almost done. Except I need, like, 30 more seconds of footage, because there were a couple places I didn't go the last time I streamed. So, oh well. Oh no, let me into the cannon. <laughs> Come on, it'll be fun. <laughs> Aw, oh, now we won't be able to get launched to the Sky Island. Wait. Anyway, uh, uh, yes, so the last time we were here, I did, in fact, get some footage of the Sky, uh, the Stormwind Arc and the Water Dungeon, but I figure it would be a good idea to uh, just check them out again, you know, take a quick little breeze through. Um, ooh, smart. Good, good. Yeah. <laughs> now we're the, the School of Athens painting made flesh. Oh boy. All right, there were a couple things I wanted to focus on. Um, each of the dungeons is this interesting blend of Zonai architecture and something that looks a lot more in line with the architectural stylings of the four peoples of Hyrule. Uh, so for instance, we've got this big old Zonai great looking thing just embedded in this more rough-hewn orange stone with the Rito chevron and diamond patterns. Uh, and this miniature temple of time that's just embedded in it that serves no purpose except as a laser defense tunnel. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what I should do? I... Mm-hmm. <laughs> Swat mine. <laughs> uh, I think it is explained that the Stormwind Arc was created for the Rito by the Zonai, uh, which is neat and has a lot of interesting implications. Uh, and it does line up. Like, the whole center of the structure is very much this is just straight up zonai this is but like it's decorated in a way that makes it clear that the rito influence was intentional um and of course uh let me see if i can get a good angle on it uh the prow of the boat uh along with these extremely cool just like stone wing patterns to either side which is dope this whole thing is very cool i feel like this dungeon has the same aesthetic vibes that I get from a lot of the, like, Journey and Abzu and stuff. Uh, yeah. And a lot of the music, too. It's got that vibe. Um, oh, where's that? I need, the, I need the good angle. Let me see the front of the boat. Mm-hmm. It's gonna look so cool. Huh. 
<laughs> well, the main the main thing about the prow is that it's the it, it's the divine beast head. It's Von Beto, but again. Yeah. Yeah, you can see when I'm wearing that. I'm going to put on the helmets every time we uh, visit one of these so we can just make that comparison, because... Uh-huh, exactly. Um, so the there are also... Oh, all of these places have these little, like, Zonai, like, meander patterns um, that look like the Divine Beast heads. Uh, this one, it's a little... I'm not sure where it is. Normally, it's, like, in the middle. Uh, but there's for sure one in the water temple. We can go check that out in a minute. Um, <laughs> it's fine. We can we can play this by ear or by or. Yeah. Also, that's <laughs> also that's why he's here today. <laughs> I was like, "Hey, I know that you don't normally guest on my solo Tears of the Kingdom streams, but I was thinking of going and looking at a bunch of pretty architecture." And he was like, "Sold." <laughs> what? You don't hear blue? <gasps> oh my god! Hold on. Shit. Uh, just a frack. No, this is this is tragedy. Fuck. Everyone, be silent. Hello. Spirit. All right, chat, if you can hear him, throw a tater in there. Step one, I show up on the stream. Step two, I ruin the audio of the stream by being here. God damn it. <laughs> All right. Anyway. <coughs> okay, thank God. All right, did you say anything important while I was apparently fucking talking to myself or something? No. Um, what, I, what I did say that made you laugh, which was someone said, does red or does blue feel bad that red is encroaching on his territory? And I said, no, this is brain rot and I'm winning. <laughs> yes, yes, that is exactly what is happening. Uh, but also this was bait. I, I lured him in with promises of cool architecture. God damn it. I'm sorry, guys. I, I checked everything every fucking time. And I was like, the Discord settings look right, but no. Every time I change the, the audio, it's it's so annoying because I've got the mics, of course. I've got two different mics, one of them for basically just these kinds of streams and one of them for more solid uh, audio quality. And then I also need a virtual uh, output system for these specifically so that it can route internal audio uh, into you guys' ear holes. <laughs> and it's like, it's a crapshoot which of those three settings will get selected. Anyway. I mean, Streamlabs is always dead to me because I never saved my settings, so I have to rebuild every stream from scratch, and eventually I'm like, actually, screw this. I do think that was probably my fault, because I didn't realize that our settings were shared across our computers, so I'd no, be like... No, 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 this happened way before you started doing Streamlabs. Huh. okay, well, I do feel yeah. a little bit better now. Uh, anyway, uh, chat, you didn't hear it, apparently, but when we were talking about the prow of the ship, and I was like, look, it's the Divine Beast Head, and Blue was like, whoa, Nelly, so it is, so... So that's, that's the kind of scintillating dialogue that you missed for those tragic first seven minutes of this stream. Yeah, chat, you didn't hear it, but Blue was like, oh my god, I'm so impressed with your architecture knowledge uh, for the first five minutes of the stream. Yeah. You should have been there. He I claps, could, too. He, he was like, wow, you could be teaching those classes. And I was like, yeah, -huh, I know. <laughs> I'm just giving everyone else a chance. God damn it. <sighs> All right, we're fine. Um... Blue was like, what's a savant like you doing in a place like this? You should be at the universities. <laughs> <laughs> My god, you got one million percent. <laughs> okay. I wonder if it means something that there's two of them, or if it was just Hydra. an aesthetic. Hydra bird. Hydra bird. You know what? It also kind of looks like when they're at that angle. It also kind of looks like the 
dope ass loft wings from Skyward Sword because they they mm. always had that pelicany look. Little bit. Yeah. Little bit. I. The problem is I didn't mean to say dope ass. I meant to say dopey, but instead it sounds like I like the loft wing designs, <laughs> which is the worst oh, character yeah. assassination I could have done to myself. That's the unfortunate thing about using ass as a universal suffix is mm. that sometimes, sometimes it's it, like it's bad. Yeah. Yeah. But some, uh, in a couple rare instances, like, sick ass is good. Yes. But, yeah. Dope ass is good. Dopey is bad. Sick yeah. is still good. <sighs> Alright, I did want to get inside the Temple of Time, look and shoot, so we could just... I love the feather oars. I just... That aesthetic. I don't... I don't know what else there is to it beyond the fact that it's oars that are also feathers. But damn, it's nice. I like it a lot, too, yeah. And, and I, fact... I love that they're like... Or, sorry, go ahead. Well, the fact that they kind of comboed the uh, bird design and the, like, it's a boat, so it looks a little bit like a seahorse. It's just cool, you know? It's got, yeah, like some, some Viking longship aesthetics in there. Mm -hmm. But I, I... Oh, one of the things I said earlier was that I love that the Zonai building this for the Rito we're like, yeah, we can just make it use whatever tech that we have that makes things fly, but, like, let's also, like, trick it out for them a little bit and just, like, give it oars for literally no reason. As a treat. Except for style points. It, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I, I'm so curious about these little boats. Because they've also got the feather oars, you know? Uh, yeah. Small addition. Oh, they're so cool. And obviously there's, like, the Ludo narrative side of things where it's like oh you you can't get you can't control the small boats because they are part of the dungeon design you can't even use recall on them to to change yeah. their trajectory um all right and it's still got that sort of top heavy upside down wedding cake look that the zone i really like but yeah. done in this sort of step pyramid rough hewn orange stone chevron style zone i architecture is caked up <laughs> <laughs> oh no no <laughs> damn it we thought of the joke after doing the entire detailed diatribe <laughs> you'll just have to imagine the caked up jokes there we go let me up thank you all righty i still don't like it's been kind of a long time since I did this dungeon because uh, this was the first one I did in this run I think so I genuinely just don't remember like what the purpose of this like the doors the puzzle you have to jump it. in one of the little terminal thingies is down there oh I see yeah yeah there's a bunch sense. of lasers yeah yeah just like that yeah yeah I do like that you can just see the juxtaposition between like the the rough hewn Rito stone that's yeah. showing signs of snow and then the zonai that just doesn't react to the environment in the slightest. All right. Whoops. It is cool how a lot of it is just a blend between like zonai and Rito stuff together, and then there's the completely smooth surfaces of the zonai architecture that are like we just built these ones. Because we liked it this way. <laughs> yeah, we thought it was oh, pretty. Oh, yeah, that's what I was talking about. I was making a joke about some really, like, fussy, sassy Zonai architect. Like, up, 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 feathers off. I'm, <laughs> I'm doing this part by myself. Yeah. And even here. Oh, there it is. There's the Divine Beast head. I knew it was in there somewhere. Uh, it's, yeah. They always put the little, like, Zonai. Oh. Yeah. Oh, and that's what's on the, um... Oh god, the lightning ones. You know, I noticed, like, oh, that's a pattern on the ones in the lightning temple. Mm -hmm, I didn't mm -hmm. realize it's a divine beast head. Oh my god, that's so cool. Every time. Every time. All right. Fuck, man. All right, is there that's anything like, else? That's like, when you talk about how hmm? you have to, like, stare at a painting for, like, six hours to really understand what's going on. Like, that's the kinds of things that you see mm -hmm. when you just really engross yourself in something for a long period of time. Like I'm doing, um, I've got a detailed diatribe on Friday um, about uh, the video game Stray Gods. Yeah. And there are things that I listened to and, and heard. Um, it's a very good game, you should all play it. Um, role playing musical, it's fantastic. Second. There are things that I like heard between our first playthrough and when we recorded it that I just like picked up like, oh, I, I just made this connection. Um, and I heard like, oh, this is a melody that shows up here in this context and it's reapplied over here in this other context. And like they, the the implications uh, are shared and it's like, okay, cool. This is like a little musical formula thing that they're doing. Okay, neat. And then we recorded the detailed diatribe and I had like four more of those and I will continue to for the rest of time because the more you spend engrossed in the subject, the more you see. And like stuff like this is so, so, so cool. 
Yeah. And I feel like we're going to see that kind of a detail in a Zeltic video at some point. Like, did you know the little icons above the terminals are the divine beasts? Like, that's just so fucking cool. Oh, man. I'm so excited. You only excited learned that when this. you stare at it for 12 hours. Yeah. Because, like, <laughs> that's the thing. Like, when, uh, when I got into Breath of the Wild, I was, like, five years late to the party. So I was already, like, there were already all of those videos about it. And they were yeah. so fun to watch. You just be like, whoa, I didn't know that. Whoa, Heaper Peak is what? That's crazy. Uh, and in this case, that's kind of how I feel about this. But the game is so new that a lot of those videos aren't out yet. So it's like, fine, I'll do it myself. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. All right, let's check out the water dungeon. Leo, don't eat my sandwich. This is the one where I'm the most confused about the purpose it was supposed to serve. Uh... It is, I was thinking about this today. It is a built cloud. Oh yeah, I guess that is all it's for. Rain and such. It is, it is the physical construction of a rain cloud. Yeah, that would do that's it. That's it. All right, and I just it. think that's cool. Oh, I, I don't know cool. there's necessarily much more to it than that, but it's like it is the, the structure that provides the waterfall into the Zora's domain area. Mm. And that's, I just think that's neat. I mean, that's a that's a bit of a, a, a hard read, but also not that deep of a read. Um, so maybe I'm just completely talking out of my ass here, but... That is the the feeling I get when I look at this. Like, what is happening here? Cloud. It is a cloud made of stone. Yeah, but at the same time, it's also this, like, kind of wide promenade-looking thing. It's got, you know, and, and this is one of the more obvious blends of Zonai and uh, yeah. Rito architecture. No, Zora. Zonai, sorry. And, Zonai Zora. and Zora. <laughs> yeah, uh, I got my Wind Waker uh, <laughs> evolutionary charts confused. But it's, two it's Zs, got... Donai and Zora, two Gs, Goron and Gerudo. It all uh, gets mixed up in there. Yeah, but it's got that sort of like, the Zonai always do these sort of wedge shapes. Uh, and the stone pattern is this kind of clean, smooth marble that looks greenish in the shadows with like some gold detailing. And then it's right next to this Zora stonework that's made of like dark blue something that, you know. Mosaic-y something or other. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the uh, the mosaic patterns have these inserts of this more like shiny blue rock and stuff like that. Oh, right, here we go. This is the most overtly blatant That's a Divine Beast head. Uh, right in the middle, right there. Oh, gorgeous. Look at that. Yep, there it is. <laughs> there it is right on our boy. And they're also up there. All of these spouts are the Divine Beast heads. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep, they're just everywhere. Um, but this whole area, like, it's it clearly serves a purpose. It's got all these little guys jellying up their jams. But, like, you know, the Stormwind Ark is a warship and an accompanying fleet. This place looks like a big, slightly wrecked, like, palace area or something like that. I just don't know what it was for. But I think that's interesting. I, one thing that made me uh, think of maybe the, the cloud thing is that since there's zero G, this, there's this idea that you're in suspension, like a water droplet in a cloud. Ooh. That's, again, that's a stretch. That is a, that is a big stretch. <laughs> this is a Mr. Fantastic ass kind of stretch we got going on here. But that's, uh, that's what I was thinking when I was trying to, like, consider the water temple like what is what is the feeling that this place evokes what is the 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 structure the meaning um the mm, what's the other word i'm looking for on the, the like the ethos of the place i saw someone suggest that the water temple is upside down i don't think that's correct but it was i have an interesting not heard thing. that it, it was like I, I saw it pop up in a comment on something um but it's an interesting concept. I don't think it's right because everything here kind of evokes the look of Zora's domain with that yeah. sort of like, like these little fin things, especially it kind of mm -hmm. has that look of like King Dorofan's throne and stuff like that. Um, Cleo, I need you to not eat my sandwich. Oh, this is the perfect shot for the uh, divine beast head. Where the hell is Sidon? Did I leave him oh, behind? Oh God, yeah. Where are you at my boy? Uh, he doesn't join you up here, I don't think. Sidon, no. Maybe if I unsummon and resummon him, he'll show up. Oh, subtitle of the temple is the great wellspring of Hyrule, so I definitely think its in-lore purpose is to provide fresh water for the domain and Hyrule in general. There we go. Okay. All right. Yeah, that makes sense. Cloud. Rain machine. Yeah, rain machine. 
Oh yeah, subterranean ancient waterworks certainly lends support to the rain machine in the sky idea. So it's a it's a two part system where you have the rain machine and then the cistern down below. Right, which reminds me, we needed to get footage of the cistern. Cloud, 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 <laughs> cloud, 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 cloud. And I do like how it's still clearly, visibly, like kind of busted. There are stairwells that are yeah. broken and stuff like that. And it's so cool to see like the ancient Zora architecture compared to the the modern one that we're more familiar with where the modern one is very like sleek and it's not it's not metal because that would you know rust but it's got mm -hmm. that very very smooth um almost like it's made of um like an enamel uh or or something um, yeah it's like polished slabs of opal almost yeah yeah opal um that kind of material all through zora's domain which i, mean, I guess makes sense because opal is the power of water in mm -hmm. in lore um, but seeing the ancient Zora, Zona, Zora, ancient Zora um, <laughs> architecture have a lot of the similar kind of design language of very tall, thin shapes, fins, and very splayed out, like um, kind of canopy um, shapes in, in, in certain places, and you know, little fin designs, and very tall, lithe, thin, stretched out, like the columns that you see in Zora's domain. And it's like some similar design languages there, but. It's much more like fancified and elaborate and ornate and decorative in the modern Zora, where the ancient Zora is much more rigid and sturdy looking. Um, it's cool to see that kind of evolution between ancient and modern, where it's like it's a lot of the same ideas. We just got realier with them. Mm. Here we go. Damn, I am kind of good at this. Yeah, see? Okay. <laughs> Hold up. Word. Word. <laughs> <laughs> wow, the things coming out of my mouth are like making sense and stuff. I'm like smart as fuck. Uh, <laughs> everyone's clapping. A shining golden <laughs> god, you could say. Yeah. Whoops. Just kidding. Okay. Hey, wait a second. Which Even these slabs of rock that? have zona. Oh, uh, you get this from doing the challenge at the top of the Temple of Time. Um, oh, that's what you get. Got it. Got it. Also, I just this random chunk of wood has fucking. Eh. Stop it! It's got zona runes on it. Look at that. Oh my god. Why is it like that? New I ceremonial would, plank. <laughs> I wish the Divine Beast Helms gave you uh, your set bonus if you wore them with the corresponding full, like the rest yeah. of the other set. Yeah. Seriously, because otherwise they're useless. <laughs> A little bit. They do look cool, and they do have the individual, uh, like I can wear the Vometto Divine Helm and get the cold resistance and stuff like that, but... Here we go. Ancient Zora Waterworks. Oh, hello, sir. What the? Oh. oh, I forgot I had a... Stop talking to me about the gaping hole, my man. All right, cool. Uh... <laughs> but yeah, this is another... This central pillar is another case of the uh, mostly Zora and then just a little bit of Zonai on the top part aesthetic look. Um, some some zona comes in like I know what this place needs, but even <laughs> still, I mean, look at this. The main tower is all ancient Zora designs, and it's only the zona stuff at the very top that's like distinctly that kind of zona uh, style of of design. Yeah, exactly. All right, you not have the froggy suit. Let me cheese it. I do have the froggy suit, but I don't want to change out of my duds. <laughs> we look so handsome. Why is it playing the treasure chest music? You know what? It's fine. Who cares? Oh, there's got to be. Well, we'll just, like, ascend up this pillar. And This was easier when they had waterfalls around here, I think. When they got rid of all the water what? so I could get the Zora Greaves, it's like, no, put it back. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I liked it when it was more damp. Yes. <laughs> Return the water. Perfect. There we go. And even here, it's all busted up, and I kind of like that, because... Parts of the Zonai ruins are just so perfectly preserved that it's kind of nice to find the parts that it have fallen apart. But you know what yeah. just occurred to me? The only ones that have fallen apart are the parts of the stonework that aren't Zonai. Yeah. They're the only things that show signs of time and erosion. Like, the, the Rising Island chain is super busted up. A lot of those flying islands are at, like, weird angles with each other. Yeah. But those are all the flying islands that are the Rito stonework. Let's see if we can get in there. I don't know if we... You need quality Zonai masonry. None of this Rito or Zora bullshit. <laughs> yeah, 
that's the... Mm. Alright, this might not work. So come on, come on, just let me up. It would be so fun. Is that glowing ring on the cave wall Varuta's eye? Um... Uh, no? Good catch? But, well... It's not, but it is similar. Hmm. Not everyone is Roman concrete. Yeah, for real. Oh my god. Nope, yeah, that was never gonna work. <laughs> nice one, Link. Okay, anyway. Um, yeah, I think we got most of what we needed from down here. Uh, although these patterns are interesting. I guess it all kind of has like a vaguely fish scale look. And it's cool how they they and the Rito both have that sort of chevron pattern that they use. Mm -hmm. But um, I guess here they use it in like single they don't stack three or more of them in a line it's just like one chevron around the base of a thing which looks more like a fish scale than like yeah, a it feather has a more pattern. in like quality here than the rito ones do yeah, there we where go. it's like the layered chevrons look more like a layered set of feathers mm -hmm, mm -hmm. all right let's see yeah i think that's about all we all we need from down here so let's see now we gotta do uh, this one I should probably change my outfit for first so I don't catch fire. Um, <laughs> let's check out old Garandia. Uh, ugh, I really wish they had better Flamebreaker armor in this game. It's so gross looking. It's really stupid. Alright, here we go. Was it ever mentioned if Lost Garandia predates the Zonai? Um, it's, it's not, not mentioned, but it definitely doesn't because there's a lot of Zonai stuff that we're going to see in there. Yeah. It's it's foundational to the architecture. We'll we'll see in a minute. This is why I wanted to get this footage. <laughs> I was exploring around uh, before we recorded, and it was just like, oh yeah, it's just it's just everywhere, huh? All righty. Let's see. First things first. Is there anything we want to? Oh yeah, there's there's stuff even in this entry room, if I recall correctly. First of all, uh, these little like zoni wormy patterns just on the base of these columns. That's pretty telltale. Mm, yep. They've got that gold go. highlighting. Um, and there's, I think, higher up maybe is where you start finding the runes. But also the, the sort of wormy pattern grates. They do that a lot too. I also like Sorry, how... Red, your choices are either to wear the armor or drink the lizards, says Kintara. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. You know what I also just noticed? The floor here looks like a cool lava flow with stones yeah. purposefully embedded in it. Super volcanic. That's yeah. a great detail. Come on, it'll be so fun. Just let I me mean, it's like it's like the Minecraft construction where you pour in lava and, and then, then you pour, pour water, water over it, yeah. and then you just make like a uh, like a, a set um, immediate floor. That's mm -hmm. super cool. It's like pouring concrete. It's like pouring concrete, but it's lava. That's yeah. so fucking cool. I like this impre this like concept that old Garandia kind of has like Mines of Moria vibes, where it's like. Old Goron stone masonry was really good. Oh, you know what? I got the wrong sidekick out. Where's my boy? There he is. Well, I mean, okay, he, he can't be here, but he'll be here in a bit. He'll show up later. It's fine. Um, ooh. Okay, so a couple details about uh, this little entryway thingy. Obviously, those things kind of look like Goron heads, kind of look Rudania. like... Yeah, they, they, they look like a stylized version of Rudania because Rudania does not hide. have tusks. Um, but it's got the four eyes and the... Uh, I feel like Rudania did have those sort of lower fins look. And the crest over the door kind of looks like Rudania's like, head crest seen from the side. Uh, but oh, you can yeah. also see yeah, yeah. like that's a rock with Zonai runes right over the main head. Uh... Yep. So that's that's fun. Um, let's see. This is of course the boss arena where you fight the thing, and it's got more Zonai stonework right in the middle. Dome. It's a dome. It's a <laughs> dome spotted. Dome spotted. <laughs> uh, and it's got a Rudania pattern here on the floor. It's harder oh. to figure out that's what this is because Rudania's got oh. that weird, like rotationally symmetrical look. But yeah, you can see like I. Oh, that's I, so cool. I, I. Now here's the thing that's fascinating. Mm -hmm. If the Sheikah built the divine beasts, yet the clear implication is that these ancient Zonai, Zora, Rito, Gerudo, Gorons had some kind of a knowledge of a thing that looks like this. Mm. 
it would be weird to think that the masks came first and everything else came later. So is the implication by, like, by association that there was actually, like, some kind of either Zonai or, like, living divine beast that the ones we know from Breath of the Wild are just Sheikah replicas of? Well, I wonder. Because that's terrifying to think about. <laughs> there is some evidence for that, and we'll find it when we go to the Gerudo Temple in a little while. Um, oh. <laughs> uh, but I also wanted to just point out, it's it's all this Zonai meander pattern. These look like mm. the way that they represent secret stones in their wall carvings. Mm. Yes, um, but inverted. Oh, we saw those in um, in Zora's too. It's in the center around the the main crest. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, these things, I almost wonder if they're like gravestones. They kind of have that look. You know, Bo, that's disrespectful. <laughs> Get out of there. Actually, yeah. <laughs> hey, wait a second. Let's go back to the entrance because uh, Varudania doesn't have the mouth with the tusks, but Yenobo's jade helm does. Yeah. Well, well, well. Well, well, well. <laughs> How the turntables. Uh, let's see. And here, there's another insert of the more Zonai white and gold inlaid kind of marbleish stone. Uh, just in the middle of the much more rough-hewn uh, Goron stuff, which is pretty cool. And even here, like throughout all of Old Gorondia, they've got these pillars, and they have that specific Zonai inverted wedge look. Yep. All right, you know, but let me take a gander at Someone you. called out that it looks a little Minoan, and that's a that's a good uh, good eye on that because mm -hmm. um, the most prominent inverted column design that I am familiar with is the inverted Minoan columns. Granted, those are uh, tough to tell if those are original or if that was just what Arthur Evans decided that they should have when he was doing his reconstructions at Nosos. But Boy, they. Um, we have decent reason to believe they looked something like that. I wonder if, heaven forbid, Yonobo ate a secret stone, if his dragon form would have a head that looks something like this. Mm. Oh, yeah. I think Gorons with big fucking tusks would be a cool look. Um, all right, let's see. I want to get up on that crucible, because there's something interesting about it. Uh, ooh, also, this kind of looks like uh, Valrudania's, like, lizard feet but that might yep. just be a coincidence. Um, I think that's, uh, I think that's a, a good suggestion. Yeah, and what I like about this is that the stone is all very rough-hewn, even the parts that have the little, like, Zonai squiggles on them, because it indicates that this really was handcrafted by Gorons, who tend to be like, hey, if it's roughly the right shape, it doesn't need to be perfectly spherical. <laughs> uh, yeah. And up here, the there are these Zonai runes all across this big deeply irregular lumpy chunk of rock over the dome. Yeah. And this big crucible is extremely asymmetrical and it's also covered in Zonai stuff. Also, if you go into the dome uh, in, in the dome arena and you ascend, there's a good shot you'll pop out in the lava. Hilarious. <laughs> the number of times I've done that and been like, no, I think I'll go back. Thank you. <laughs> Not small. Um, ooh. And that specifically... Uh, let's see if we can get around this lava, because uh, there's something interesting about this chunk of the architecture. Like, this is about as far from the islands, the Sky Islands, as you can get, but that yep. overhanging, like, it, it's dropped oh, down yeah. from the roof, and it produces the effect of something like the Sky Islands, even though it's blatantly anchored, and it it produces this feeling of like, that's not something the Gorons would build nowadays. And the whole of old Gorondia being that sort of top heavy look, but because they're, they're descending from the ceiling like stalactites instead of just being flying in the air. Oh, um, mm -hmm. Red, do you still have a tracker on for uh, an item? Oh yes. Uh, someone's something is beeping. Yeah, sorry. There's a treasure chest in here somewhere. I can uh, make it go away. You're all welcome. Um, all right. Yeah, I think that's most of what I needed in Old Garandia. Um, it's pretty, though. <laughs> it's got big, like, like Gimli would have a field day energy. Oh, yeah. Um, and I really cool. do like the, um, the, the kind of design implication of these things being built kind of from the ceiling down. Mm. Um, and you can really only do that with, with Zonai tech to make things float, but it's like basically tower stalactites. Yeah. Is the, the the feeling I get from looking at them. Yeah, no, definitely. 
and it ends up producing a very nice synergy with the uh, with the Zonai top heavy design school. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I also forgot uh, these bad boys are again little perfect Zonai shrines in the middle of otherwise rough hewn Goron stuff. Let's see. Oh yeah. Yep. And they again, it's not the same style as the uh, the Va Meadow head pattern over the dungeon keys in in the Stormwind arc were just like glowing runes in the wall, and these are more sculpted things sticking out of the. Anyway, it's neat. Oh, I wanted it to make a noise. Okay. Uh, let's see. There's a gong if you uh, throw Unobo into it. Oh, let's find out. Excuse me, bud. <clears throat> nope, just a regular explosion. Mm. All right, Gerudo Desert time. Shame. <laughs> nope, get out of here. All right. And all the way down in the other corner of the map. This one is the more confusing one, I think. Like, Old Garandia, they're like, yo, we got legends of it. Um... The Wellspring Island is like, great Wellspring of Hyrule. Yeah, I can read into that if I need to. Even if Azora don't really know what's up with it, it makes sense that there would be a focus on, hey, we need water, and hey, we need a place to store water. And then the Gerudo Desert one, I... Actually, you know what? There's like a mural of it in uh, Gerudo Town that we should probably check out. Let's um, do it. Let me just put on the uh, Naboris Divine Helm and... Our most breathable outfit. Have I not gotten the, the Garuda? <laughs> Our absolute sluttiest number possible. <laughs> you know, I actually think I'm a little bit lacking in the in the Gerudo slut department. It's so wild. Uh, let's just do let's just do these then. You know, it's pretty good look anyway. Um, all right, now let's just uh, warp back to Gerudo. Oh, I love the Dinrail outfit. I love it too. I wish these things were more useful because it's like, oh, yeah. you get the power up in that temperature, but it doesn't stop you from taking damage in the temperature. So what yeah. the hell? Drink the lizards. Uh, how big does Hyrule need to become before it becomes long rule? <laughs> all right, let's see. Come on, let me in, it'll be fun. All right, thank you. Ooh, Farash spotted. That's fine, we already got all the dragon footage we need. First time I saw Farash in the depths, hmm. lost my mind. <laughs> yeah. All right, here we go. Hello, ladies, thank you, let me in. All right, whatever. Um, no, I must resist the side quest. But this is actually a good thing to notice, is that there is this Gerudo writing system uh, that yeah. doesn't show up anywhere else. And that little, like, funky... That guy, that little that little thing, the diamond with the googly eyes, is another Gerudo pattern that turns up all oh. over the place. Um, and this... Oh, we gotta go to the secret club, uh, secret club for the slutty outfit. All right, maybe next time. <laughs> um but yeah this is the uh this is the thing about find the three places and then you get the thing and the thing and the stuff uh and even then it's like yeah there's a like a secret lightning temple and it's buried under the sands it's like okay cool what was it for before that uh <laughs> <laughs> pass well, let's go find out no fuck god damn it get out of there <laughs> thank you how did i misclick that badly that many times I guess that pattern is kind of dragonfly-ish. I like that. Perfect. Okay. Let's see. So there, there's some stuff on the outside that I want to look at here, because I've already seen it. But first things first, we've got... That's a camel. That's an actual straight-up camel. <laughs> How many eyes does it have? Does it have four eyes? Does this camel have... <gasps> this camel has four <laughs> eyes! I have so many questions! I guess Jeez, that makes... I cannot sneeze quietly. <laughs> oh, well, congratulations then, Gazoon Height. Um, but, like, so there's, there's Zonai runes on these rocks. There's Zonai runes down mm -hmm. at the bottom and all over the place. And, of course, these are the, the patented Zonai lotus-looking light fixtures. But also, that's a camel on the wall. An actual live yep. camel with four eyes. 
which is cool. I, I like which that. Which is what Naboris has. It is, but it's not what your average camel has. Here we have our no. Naboris looking squiggly rune on the floor. Um, as is our won't. And we've got these Zonai pillars with the Zonai runes, but they're built on a Gerudo foundation, which is interesting. And the main thing I keep noticing is like the whole thing about this temple is there are these alcoves with statues of Gerudo warriors in them. Yeah. And like that's the whole thing. That's like the entire deal. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Alright, we're good. Um, and this, huh, this construct had a Gerudo bow. That's interesting. Uh, I don't think we need to read too far into that. That just kind of makes sense. No. But yeah, it's it's some kind of like temple of light-ish, because it's got these mirrors. And also, this is another case where uh, this is a Gerudo statue, and the foundation has the Zonai eye pattern on it. It's got the the eye inside view patterns. Uh oh. Yeah. I can't quite see this uh, angle. It's uh and, oh, and it's got. Oh Gerudo yeah, yeah, yeah. There it is. There it is. The <laughs> Sorry, it took a while for my my eyes to process what I was looking at. No worries. But again, it's it's got the Zonai runes all up and down the back. So again, this is so clearly a collaboration. Yeah. Um, is that an eye? Because I feel like I kind of see the, the swirl for the tears in that. The, the thing is, that it's got the shape of the swirl for the tears, but, um, oh, let's see if we can, uh, um, oh, where would it be? Uh, maybe in, like, character profiles? I don't know where we would be able to find it. Uh, but when, so when they have that, that big, circular pattern the thing that link touches with the the zone eye hand whenever it needs to activate it it's got an eye in the center and it's got two eyes to either side because the zone eye have three eyes oh yeah and this is what those look like um got it okay let's see if we can get just up and out hold on let me look up uh old... oh i've got the wrong buddy again thanks guys i'll swap them out all right Yep, I see it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep, no, that's exactly it. Yeah. Also, this thing is called Room of Glorious Light, and it's just a big hole, which makes me think. Oh, and this is, uh, eh, it could be Naboris. I see. I see Naboris in that. I think it is. If you read eyes. the, if you read the four eyes and like two nostrils, and you ignore that it doesn't have ears, but I, I think that's what that's got to be. Um, and this thing, yeah, this looks like a throne room, basically. Or, more accurately, a secret stone location room. Ah, and here we go. Wait, Red, can you can you go back to that uh, crest in the center after you're done with this? Sure thing. Well, we'll just go right now. Yeah, the, looking at it, that is for sure, Naboris. But also, Reed, you get over here. I need to look at your weird mask thing. Yeah, because you can see um, the little, the little, little two little nubbins sticking out on the bottom. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, Naboris has six eyes. No, Naboris has, mm. I think Naboris has two eyes six. and two nostrils. Because, like, look at her mask. She's got, uh, sorry, four eyes and two nostrils. So, like, so Riju's mask, if you see, it's got four eyes and then, like, two tusks, kind of, in the same way that, um, okay. uh, yeah. It, yeah, I don't know. It, they're not quite perfect in line with each other. Naboris, it's a little hard to read, but I think the source of the Naboris design, it's like two eyes, two eyes, two nostrils. Um, and the camels we found on level one look the same. Okay. Uh, they, they also had two eyes on each side and then nostrils. Uh, speaking of, let's see. Yeah, they also got camels in this room. Big ones. I like the Gerudo mosaics that are around here too. That very bright, um, like green and, and turquoise patterning. Which is interesting because the Zonai have that jade aesthetic, but this looks distinctly yep. different from it. Very oh, distinct. and we've got here we go. We've got the little Gerudo uh, dragonfly crest right under some Zonai meander patterns. Um, and I, I like how much of uh, Gerudo architecture incorporates these little pools in the floor. Yeah, you got to cool off. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It takes some inspiration from uh, various schools of like Islamic architecture. This whole 
Um, oh gosh, yeah, the the Vonda Boris face in the back is really cool. This whole like alcove, um, like this half domed alcove with a point in a, in the front, is a very um, traditional uh, piece of uh, Islamic architecture. I don't know what the word for it is, um, but it's it's cool that it like like pulls a little element here, pulls a little element there from different places, and puts it together to make something that feels grounded, but is still very unique to the game. Yeah. Uh, so I wanted to, I noticed these when I was exploring last time. Uh, we've got more camels, uh, yeah. again, four eyed camels, which is interesting. Yeah, you're right, you're uh, right. it, it's got the sort of like vertical hieroglyphic Zonai runes right behind it. Uh, and in the bottom, we got a sand seal. There it is just hanging out, which makes me think these boys were big. And also makes me wonder about those giant rib cages we keep finding. Yeah. How do I get up there? Is there any reason to believe that sand seals are like a very long offshoot of domesticating Muldugas? Because <laughs> they got some similar shapes to them. They're just a hundredth of the size. Yeah, I'll incorporate that into my belief system. <laughs> I swear I found Gerudo text in here the last time I was in. We can check the walls again. I, I think that might have been where I saw it. One um, says giant rib cages belong to Molduga. That maybe makes more no, sense. No, when you kill big. a Molduga, it explodes into a black cloud and farts out three treasure chests. We all know this. <laughs> See if there's anything else we can get from these patterns. I feel like no. All right. Okay. Let's uh, let's make our way down a level and see what we got. A um, couple people are mentioning if it's like Egyptian art in profile where their both eyes are on the same side. Not really. Egyptian art doesn't quite. Egyptian work art like has that. one eye on the side. It's just the yeah. eye is strange because it's seen. It they're drawing the eye from the front facing view. Whoops, we are boiling. Yeah, the uh, face is side on. Um, the body is facing front. Um, so it's it's not. That's not the uh, the, the visual inspiration geez. they're going for. Hold on, let's just... There, now we can tank a lot more heat. Um, there, There is a style of art that does that, but it's pretty uncommon. That's more like Cubist and stuff. Oh, I forgot that it's not that easy to get. And let's just warp back in, whatever. Um, and I think it would make a lot more sense for it to be portraying that this is a camel that has two eyes on either side, because... Yeah. Everything else is seen from the side. It's not doing that thing where it shows you all four limbs, even if that's impractical. Yep. And the sand seals were only shown with one eye on the side. Um, all right. I swear I found Gerudo texting here before. Let's see if we can figure out where. Um, whoops. Let's see. It might have been in the Room of Glorious Light, actually. So we can just kind of ascend into that. You're thinking of Peppa the Pig. <laughs> yeah, that <laughs> I can see the confusion. <laughs> A natural mistake. Aha! I was right. Here we go. Gerudo text. Ooh, and some very overtly, like... That's a... Oh! Oh! I wonder what this stuff says. Because this looks like one of the uh, hero Seven statues. Sisters. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I like the, those sort of geometric hieroglyphs. There are um, some Egyptian hieroglyphs that are just top-down views of like house floor plans. They don't look exactly like those, but it's not utterly dissimilar. That's so cool. I want to know what it says on the sword. I think the Gerudo language has actually been deciphered. All those Zonai runes, I think, are still a mystery. Those ones are too new. Mm. Oh, and we got more uh, Nabura's heads just on the wall. Huh, how about that? Actually, how many of these ladies are there in this room? 
And are they distinct from each other? We got one. There might just be one in each corner. It's a little hard to tell. But I think that does about do us for the desert temple. Um, man, there's a lot of these things. Hmm. Right, I think you mentioned before we did this that the lightning temple was the one that was most confusing. Um, yeah. And I think that still stands because we can't really get a read on what the point of it is. Yeah, it, it kind of just feels like a palace. Uh, yeah. Or, or a mausoleum, yeah, maybe, or for like ancient team. warriors. But uh, mm, because there are a lot of warriors that are like honored with statues, if we choose to interpret that every single one of those statues honors someone in particular, and it's not just like some vague like implication of a large army, i.e. like terracotta uh, soldiers mm. in China. But what is the point then <laughs> <laughs> yeah and this this thing feels similar to riju's throne room my guess is that these uh little lotus mini temples that held secret stones were probably added after zelda went around to the sages and were like hey i need you to swear an oath to help out my boyfriend in the future yeah um which means that this probably originally served a purpose of a throne because this looks a lot like riju's throne room in the actual yeah. Gerudo town um, let's see. Let's see, maybe we can, um... Oh, for crying out loud, Link, it's not even that hot. Uh, let's see if we can figure out how to get to the eighth heroine, or the eight heroines. They're in here somewhere. Oh, yeah, there it is. Alright, let's just pop up and then run down and see. Oh, the Guy Fieri flame patterns when it's hot out are really cool on this outfit. I know, I love them. <laughs> Ooh, might be worth checking out what's in the depths under the Gerudo Temple, actually. Oh? Just because it rose out of the sand. That doesn't mean it was down there, it just could be interesting. Um... To my knowledge, um, not a ton, because I've been to the Gerudo Depths before I got the temple up, and I haven't been back since. I'm heading in exactly the wrong direction. Dummy. No, no I'm what am I doing? <laughs> ah! All right. <laughs> Nobody saw that. Anyway, as I was saying. Yeah, the uh, heroine statues are a lot more busted um, due to the upheaval, I assume. All right, there we go. And now we go the other way. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> All right, that's fine. Good work, team. Let's see, is it? Uh, nope, we want left. Great. Fantastic. Ugh, all right. Do we have any breathable outfits? I feel like this is the one thing I never actually did in this game. Huh? There we go. Now we look good, and we're not boiling. It's amazing how much just getting the hair off the back of your neck can make a summer day feel a lot more manageable. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. That thing about Breathable, giant... chat. Breathable. <laughs> <laughs> it bothers me that, like, you can take off absolutely all of your clothes in this game and still be boiling, but you can put on more clothes and suddenly be fine. anything to make that make sense yeah. <laughs> also i'm i'm just saying now that we know that giant four-eyed camels were a thing them big old rib cages are a little more suspicious <laughs> let's see oh yeah these heroin, heroin statues have seen better days let's see doesn't look zonai Looks a lot later. All right, let's that see what we. That looks proper, Gerudo. Yeah, I agree. All right, let's see what we got in the depths. Hmm, not a lot directly under it. Oh, except for the Gerudo dark skeleton. 
Oh, let's check it out. Yeah, let's check it out. I haven't seen the dark skeleton um, for Hebra and Gerudo. Oh, and the I've Gerudo. Seen the uh, Elden one. Oh my gosh, the Gerudo underground cemetery is directly under the Arbiter's Grounds ruins. That's oh. Cool. Can't wait for the Zelty video about that. All yeah. right. Now, I hate, hate, hate dealing with Gibidos, so we're going to not do that. We're just going to speed through. Watching other people play uh, Tears of the Kingdom, mostly Point Crow, has revealed to me what, like, phobia blind spots I have in this game. Because so <laughs> far, nothing has wigged me out, whereas, like, a lot of stuff in other Zelda games has wigged me out. But, like, even, like, the grossest stuff with the Gibdos, I'm like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> it's not It's not that they're gross. They're just annoying. Although, I actually, I do currently have a flaming sword, which would probably make this pretty trivial. Nice. All right, let's check out... Is the Gerudo Graveyard? It is interesting that a zone I ruined would have a Gerudo Underground Cemetery. Yeah. All right, fuckos. Prepare to meet your doom. One of my favorite word, fuckos. <laughs> yeah. All right, cool. That was easy. Get in my way, bitch. And don't think I've forgotten about you, my friend. Be gone, thought. Perish. I'll come back and get the bits later. I just don't like how they move. That's really it. They've got that zombie lurch that I'm not fond of. Mm-hmm. So there's got to be something in here, right? It's a Gibdo, I swear to God. Nope, we're good. I think I already got whatever was here. I do like how they've just got stuff embedded in them. Like, people have been trying. Yeah, there's just, like, someone's sword from who knows how many hundreds of years ago. Yep. All right. Well, not a lot to learn from here, I think. Except the Gibdos are unpleasant to deal with, and I don't like them very much. Yeah, this looks pretty solidly just Zonai. Gibdo gods. Yeah, yeah, I'm not seeing any Gerudo text anywhere. Although it is odd that there would be a little cemetery thing just made by and for Zonai. Oh, hold on. For all the people who died in the mines. <laughs> Wait a minute. That's not the Nabora sigil. That's something completely different. What is that? Um, oh. Oh my god, that's the light dragon. What? What? Am I wrong? I feel like I see, like, the, oh, the antlers for the light dragon. You might be right. I don't know if it's the light dragon, but it's kind of got that vibe. Let's see if the others have that, too. All right, let's see. Yeah, it's the same pattern on all of them. <laughs> Gibdos everywhere and the tombs are empty. Huh, what's up with that? <laughs> it's, it's a mystery, I guess. You know, I think you could be right, but it's a little hard to tell because they're so abstract. It's very abstract. Someone was saying maybe um, the heroines, but I don't, I don't see That's anything to make That's even more abstract. That. It's got yeah. that sort of tapering look that could be the light dragon snoot, the extremely boopable snoot. All right, let's see. We got anything else or no? Let's just figure out. Yeah, okay. Dark skeleton time. Because the reason I, like, I hesitate on saying, oh, yeah, that's the light dragon is because there are no eyes on it. It's really just, like, long face and then the sort the of branching horns, antlers look. The antlers, yeah. It could be. It, like, it, it feels like this is the... We're, we're looking at it from the right angle. It's not upside down or anything. And that yeah. kind of significantly limits what it could be. Um, oh. But it's not, it's not the Naboris pattern. I don't know. Oh, hold on. Excuse me. Something must be killed. Excuse me, sir. Thank you. Okay. Major, for God's sake, you have lightning powers. This shouldn't be this hard. Okay. Anyway, uh, we mm, we probably nah. It's fine having Reju out here. Reminds me of where exactly I was when we were doing this. Oh, hold on. Something went sparkly in there. What was that? Oh, heck yeah. Hey, get out of the way, please. Thank you. Okay, great. Yeah, I guess it could... I mean, it couldn't really be any of the other dragons. But then it's like, why is the light dragon's face on a random tombstone in the Zonai Depths? That also doesn't make that any sense. a little weird. 
I don't know, though. She has been flying around for a while. <laughs> oh, yeah, and also the Colosseums are all obviously Zone I architecture, because basically everything oh, yeah. in the Depths is Zone I architecture, so... Interesting questions there. You know, I've seen a few people be like, hey, I think maybe the Zonai had, like, a class system or whatever. And I'm like, what? No, just because the depths were only used for mines and ritualistic <laughs> combat. Well, shit. Okay. <laughs> maybe a little class system as a treat. Hold on. Literally invent the concept of royalty. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, at least reinvented it, maybe. Yeah. I still hold that this is the first Hyrule. I think that that answer was a cop out on their part, but that's okay. I wonder if the ma uh, the uh, the gloom hands have respawned down here. I kind of hope not. No, oh. God, this thing is huge. Yeah, and when Massive. we get up to the head, hmm? Massive. It's it's big. Is this the one that you've seen already? I don't remember. I've only seen Elden. Okay, well, all of the uh, dark skeletons kind of look like, roughly the same structure. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's entirely spine and ribs. This thing is a snake. That's not up for debate. That's so cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> God, what on earth would this thing have looked like when it was alive? I like that it is so profoundly massive. It would be, like, ten times wider around the middle than any of the dragons. Yeah. Dragons can do donuts inside the rib cages to these. <laughs> <laughs> I should really be wearing my glowy armor. I am curious about what killed these things, but maybe we're not ready to have that conversation. It's a conversation for when you kids are older. <laughs> mm -hmm. Let's see. Long frocks. I like your thinking. The thing is, the, the great skeletons in Breath of the Wild were already interesting. And the fact that they're different in this game is confusing. No, 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 Link! Why? Okay, it's fine. it's fine. To accept that there are some things that were done differently just for the sake of changing stuff <laughs> yeah. because it is a video game yeah i will tolerate this um but i don't know uh i think it's interesting that they were all cetaceans like they were clearly whales and, and the zelda games have a big history of big old whales and all that jazz um all right it's time to put on the glow pants i've tolerated this for too long Yeah. Um, but I don't think the Zelda series has much of a history of giant snakes. No. Oh god, what was that? Oh, found him. No oh, thank you. Later, fellas. Excuse? Well, how about that? Alright, let's just ignore that clipping error or whatever. Eh. I can't help but notice that not only is this a big O skull, it's got like spikes on the back? Like like ridges? I wonder if they all have that. I don't think I thought to check last time. God, the skull is insanely big. Mm-hmm. Rather not deal with the horror lens, but uh Hold on. Let's uh let's light it up a oh, little bit. Oh, that's the snoot. Yep, we're on the snoot. Hold on. Um, come on. Big. Oh, jeez. Where is it? I just want my glow. Whatever. There we go. Jeez. Ooh. Uh, spikes for muscle attachments. Big that's jaw support. I guess maybe that's why, like, spines have some of that, like, little spiky business on the sides. That does make a lot of sense. I don't know, though. We can check to see if the others are like that. It's a big boy. Yeah. 
Could the representation uh, on the Gerudo graves be the dark skeleton? Possibly. The head doesn't Maybe. really look like that. So I can't help but notice it oh, doesn't have any teeth. Oh, what do look like? Teeth. Nah. Also, we're in the entirely wrong corner of the map. Hmm. Alright, let's check out the uh, Hebra Dark Skeleton. Which is... Um, there it is. Okay. All right, it'll take a little doing to get there, but it's not that bad. It's the same symbol on the Zonai paraglider fabric. Ooh, I think that's more evidence in the uh, light dragon corner, actually. Oh. We might have a chance to look. I think we got a paraglide from where we're at to get there. Pulling like... it up on my uh, oh yep there well. it is that is absolutely the pattern on the zone I uh, paraglider fabric wow but no God. then it probably can't be the light dragon because for all the timey wimey shit that happened that she still didn't exist before yeah. the zone I disappeared hmm hmm. all right well this boy. Also has the three head spikes. Skull does look basically the same as the other one. I continue to notice it does not have any teeth. A bit strange. Several questions. Could be a dragon that was once a Zonai. Then it would have little legs. I got nothing. Yeah. Ah, oh, dang it, Riju, that's not what I wanted. All right, cool. Huh, okay. Um, oh, in terms of things we actually should check out while we're down here. Uh, where's this? Alaskan bullworm. <laughs> there it is. Nah, the, um, the antlers are not the same shape as Raru's ears. No, uh, also, we've already probably seen what it looks like when a Zonai turns into a dragon. <laughs> <clears throat> three times. Um, all right, so this is the secret fifth dungeon. Um, it, of course, being Minoru's special place. So you've got all these owl statues that have her headdress on them, which is pretty cool. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, because she doesn't really have a divine beast exactly. So instead, the pattern is her helmet. Uh, of course, the Zonai ruins and also the Zonai meander patterns are everywhere. Um, yeah. and this thing is pure Zonai, like you said, it's no, uh, yeah, hybridization of anything else. So it's, it's all smooth stone and it's, it's all upside down wedding cakes and stuff. And it's, it's, it's very fancy. Um, now let's just real quick. I don't understand why it's built like this. That's fine. Um, is this the uh, entrance to the spirit temple? Yep. Yeah. Okay. It's also got those... So oh, hold on. This place has that pattern everywhere. Oh. I was not expecting us to find some weird mystery Zonai pattern when we were doing this. But it's on every level of the walls. Is this? What the, what the hell is it? That's so weird. Huh. All right, let's think about this. The Zonai have the uh, the dragon, boar, and owl pattern thing. We know about that. Uh, they they built that in their older ruins. I think it's a Zonai. I don't think it's a Zonai because when they when the Zonai represent themselves, they show all three of their eyes. It's like the main thing about their patterns. Yeah. Um. It kind it doesn't really look like Rauru is the thing. Rauru is well. Let's check out the character profile. Uh, it also wouldn't make sense because none of the other, like, Zonai patterns like this show the whole body. It's always just the face. Yeah, I guess it only looks like Rauru in that it is top-heavy. <laughs> um, and, like, a little caked up, but, like... 
little wide in the middle. Look, but it's that's clear- no, Raru doesn't have antlers. This isn't Raru. No, this is clearly some kind. It's the head of something, and it looks like a dragon, kind of. Does it? No, it doesn't look like our stupid helmet, except superficially. Um, oh. does kind of look like our stupid helmet. Not that much. Uh. Okay, could be a symbol for the zone I like the Gerudo symbol. It could be. We're only really seeing it in the depths and in places where the dead are specifically buried. Let's, well, and on our paraglider. Let's check the Temple of Time. It's possible it's also up there. Um, do we, I'm seeing a couple sentiments in chat of, do we consider this like a composite image? Like a, like a totem or something? If it's like, you know, three faces together? That would make it maybe even a little harder to, to parse out. But... Okay. That is a possibility. Let's see how it... Mm, no. Okay. So the, the main thing that it could look like would be this part of the Zone I armor set, the ancient hero aspect that has the owl, the uh, dragon, and the boar kind of stacked on top of each other. Mm, but but that's I, not it. It's not it. <laughs> The owl has the very distinctive three eyelashes to the eye system. Um, it could potentially... Well, hold on. It doesn't really look like just the dragon, either. It looks a little bit like just the dragon. It's got the horns and then the... Uh... 84 health on the Ancient Heroes aspect. Nice. Oh, yeah, because I, I fully upgraded it. I wanted to see if it looked different when you fully upgraded it, and uh, it didn't. But that's fine. Uh, <laughs> I'm not mad. All right, let's just put our clothes back on. And then I think let's go check out the Temple of Time. Where's my shirt? There it is. Okay. Yeah, we don't have that pattern on us either. Big fan of this accidental conspiracy board stream. I'm glad. <laughs> I knew something like this was going to happen. <laughs> Sonia's grave. That's a good... Ooh, yeah. Okay. We'll check out the Where Forgotten is Temple. Is it? Is that in the Forgotten Temple? It is in the Forgotten Temple, yeah, but I don't think it has that pattern on it. But given that it is a grave pattern, it might be in the Forgotten Temple. Um, but let's let's see if it's plastered on the walls of the Temple of Time first. All right, which direction are we going? Exactly the wrong one. Love it. Okay, here we go. And yeah, there it's it's on our paraglider. But what does it mean? <laughs> hell is that this is so fun i feel like we're, yeah. we're like getting into this ahead of the the theorizing curve so we found something that we hadn't already heard about hear that zeltic this one's free <laughs> <laughs> please investigate this i'm so curious and there's no way we're gonna figure this out all right well it's not the zone of meanders everywhere yada yada um <laughs> This is the exception to the rule that the Zonai architecture doesn't get busted up. So yeah. That does make sense. This thing got ripped wholesale out of the ground, so... Oh, here, uh, the pattern's split in half. See at the base of those steps, Red? Oh! Just, came up. just a sec, let me, uh... I think you're right. I think it's kind of everywhere, but... Oh! Oh, it's on the pillars. That's what the pattern on the pillars is. See? Yeah. When you see it on a corner, it... Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Huh. So then it is absolutely everywhere. It's not just a death association. Well, maybe. Like, the thing is, we haven't been looking too closely at the corner meander patterns of the uh, pillars before. The, a lot of pillars like these don't have... Uh... Oh, okay, hold on. Yeah, all right. See these things... It's the same pattern, but rotated. So it's 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 the pattern that appears in the corners and on edges, but mirrored. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, let's see where else we can get this thing. Um, Cause like, okay, these little corner guys, that's not the full pattern. So it's not, no. it's not quite absolutely everywhere. It's not Is that just, just the top. No, that's something else. Ah, here we go. Here they are. Right in the center of each panel in the wall. Huh. Okay. What does it mean? What does it mean? <laughs> <laughs> but it's also not on these pillars uh, right by the entrance, the ones that only have text in the middle. Um, God, I wish we could read this. 
Also, let's uh, let's just get rid of Regia real quick. Um, there we go. Yeah, it's in the center of every panel. It yeah, that looks like it's gotta be text. It's it's. I mean, it could theoretically just be like gibberish, but it's it's got that sort of it's got the look of that has a meaning. I just don't know what it is. You know? Oh my god! And each of the text panels is different exactly. too, which means there's oh fuck. Nintendo. <laughs> there's a possibility. No, there's repeats. Uh, like this one over here, where it's like medium length line, oh, okay. short line, long line, long line, yeah. short line, medium. That's the same as uh, this one over here. I think they're offset just by one each. Um, okay, okay. These big gear guys uh, have only text, but they don't have the meander pattern on them. Um, and once we translate this, we're going to have a lot to do. <laughs> yeah. Alright, let's uh, just get back up to where we're going. So the Temple of Time... Oh, yep. Yeah, there's a little half pattern in the uh, spaces between the gear panels. Uh, you can kind of just see it sneakily. So did the Temple of Time... It had to pre-exist Zelda, because Sonya had time powers as well. That was like a whole yeah, thing. Yeah, and it was on land. Yeah, it was near the Great Plateau, I think. Okay. So, so that's all well and good. So that pattern is older than the Light Dragon. It's older than Zelda's arrival. And if we assume that the Temple of Time was built before all the Zonai disappeared, that symbol is older than the Zonai's disappearance, along with uh, all the other symbols that we find... Okay, yeah, it's absolutely everywhere. It's on these hanging columns. Um, man, this is weird. What is it? It's so specific, too. It's not... They could have done anything for this. And if yeah. and if they wanted to, they could have done an assortment of sort of non-repeating tessellating patterns, or non-repeating bases for tessellating patterns, and then just put that everywhere. Um, which I think is what they did for the grating that's absolutely everywhere. Uh... All right, let's check out the Forgotten Temple. Oh, nope, that's not I right. refuse to accept that this is King Raru. This is not Raru, because it's older than Raru. It's older than Raru. <laughs> Although I suppose we don't really know how long the Zonai naturally lived. It's implied to be a while, because Zonai, uh, because Raru and Minoru seem to... Are the last of the Zonai. <laughs> yeah, but they also seem to know what vaguely happened to the rest of the Zonai. Like... The reaction that Raru has makes it seem like... Because well, when Ganondorf kind of does his Ocarina of Time redux, like, yeah. oh, teehee, what a shame that the Zonai no longer grace us with their presence. Uh, he kind of has a little, like, pointed non-reaction, and it's like, hmm, something there. Um, and he also talks in uh, the collective first person when he's talking about who made the constructs. He's like, yeah, we made them to, like, help us with stuff, and then they got really good at it and started being better than us at it, which was neat. Um, all right, hold on. Older than Raru is the new older than Dirt. <laughs> okay. We're off to a promising start in that I'm not seeing it anywhere yet. <laughs> Also, this is much older masonry than a lot of the other stuff we've seen. Like, compare this to the Temple of Time. The Temple of Time is pristine. Mm. This is much more rough-hewn. You're right. Not only is it much more rough-hewn, it's clearly Zonai make, but it's got the look of the parts of the Zonai architecture in the Pharaon region. It's got these, yep. these dragon heads. Um, ancient, ancient Zonai. In fact, it is absolutely stacked with dragon heads. They're everywhere. Um, I... Huh. Huh. I'm just, oh, baby. I'm just noticing the rocks just placed clearly where all the sages stood. They're all yeah. fun different sizes. Who put these there and why? <laughs> okay. Okay, hold on. Pattern spotted. I'm holding. But it's it's spotted in the split in half version. It's on the yeah. corners of each of these slabs. And also newer construction, pointedly. Yeah, yeah it's because this is where Raru released the uh, secret stones from for everybody. Um... And this is also, every one of these slabs says the same thing. It's got the same runes on it. So there's no uh, no signs there. Let's just grab you. Uh, okay, Sonya's grave does not 
have any symbols on it. It's like eroded all the way down, which is interesting. All right, let's see. So, so the overall structure of the Zonai Ruin in the Forgotten Temple. This is very old stuff, but clearly Zonai make. The thing in the middle is newer, and we know when it was added. It's stacked with dragons. It's got the aesthetic of places like the Typhlo Ruins. And then these things, the map of the geoglyphs, that has to be more recent. Yep. Because... Because the geoglyphs were response to the tears. Exactly. This room... It's kind of got a mix of Forgotten Temple architecture and Zonai architecture. It's got these, it's got the wedge patterns and it's got very fainted Zonai runes on the pillars of the, the columns. And down here, it's got, hmm. Yeah, it's got the Zonai light sources, although that's not as crazy. No. It's so cool to see the like the Zonai Zen Garden and then the smooth stone built into the rougher parts that are original to the temple. There is also the fact that the geoglyph parts of this look like they are separate slabs that were carved and put onto the map later. This could have easily been a map room before it was repurposed to be a geoglyph's room. I The reason I disagree is because the smooth sand underneath is very much like late Zonai the construction of the shrines. Like, we only see that Zen garden sand in the shrines, which is late. I agree. Uh, well... Yeah, although the thing is, that specific concentric ring pattern, when it's not in the sand, is all, all over the place in Zonai construction. Um, it's not present here so much, but it is in the Temple of Time. Uh, okay. it, it's like on the walls and stuff. Yeah, like, gang, see, that's what they think Raru looks like. This is not Raru. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fair point. Um, oh, boy. Yeah, yeah, it's... If it was Raru, it wouldn't be top-heavy, is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they know enough to cake him up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see. This architecture is interesting. It doesn't feel... Oh, and of course, this is the Zonai metal grating that just shows up absolutely everywhere, and that looks like a Zonai light source embedded in it. Yep. So we can assume that this entire part of the Forgotten Temple structure is old Zonai stonework. And this is the this is the classic, hey, you should jump from here, Zonai design, although it does yep. look older and grayer. But, I mean, obviously the geoglyphs part of this room has to be later. Hold on. What? This tells me nothing. Also, that's old Hyrulean. That's not Zonai text. It's it's got that sort of geometric rune pattern instead of the more flowy Zonai stuff. What does True. it mean? But it is possible that this map is older than the geoglyph stonework because if you look, they were clearly carved on separate slabs and just placed down. Yeah. And it would make sense for them to have a map of Hyrule. But also, there's the castle. What the fuck is that doing there? That's a good point. Did Raru and Sonya have a castle here? No, people have figured out where Raru and Sonya's castle was. Really? I think so. Uh, wow. You can, like, infer it from... I remember someone has done the work to figure it out. Um, let's see. There's no sign of... Well, obviously, there's no sign of... The depths. None of the temples start off on the surface, and the Gerudo uh, temple isn't marked on the map. But that doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Also, the castle is very clearly, like, metal. It's like a little metal yeah. model that someone put on there, so that could also Even be added later. later. Yeah. Because yeah. they built the castle over the, the site of Raru's ceiling. Yeah, no, you're right. Ceiling. Yeah. Hmm. Questions upon questions. This is the thing that you actually have to do when you're doing real archaeology is to understand the concept of layers. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not a real archaeologist. I'm <laughs> trained in classics. I'm That's... trained in understanding civilization from usually the basis of their literature. But understanding the way in which layers interact and what is older, what's younger, what is contemporaneous, where uh, sometimes you can see what looks to be a newer layer inside of an older layer or an older layer on top of a newer layer. 
that whole process is one of the trickiest things to do in archaeology and figuring out just the basis of like what is the order of things mm. is extremely hard without any written sources <laughs> yeah and this whole place is almost unfathomably ancient like this is the oldest yeah. temple in the entire also i can't help but notice that unlike a lot of zonai architecture this place was not built with ascend in mind um, no it's got stairs and shit <laughs> basic bitch stairs. Is there Zonai pottery? There is. You can find pots on the Great Sky Island. Oops, I think we miscalculated. Yeah. That <laughs> uh, that's fine. It's fine. We didn't really need to be in the Forgotten Temple anymore anyway. Um, okay, since we just got to look at a lot of stonework from the Zonai that must have been older, I want to check out the Typhlo ruins now that it's sure. no longer submerged in magical darkness. And then I'll probably need to head out in a little bit afterwards. Probably smart. Person pointing out but this is fun. Yeah, this is fun. I'm, in, I'm enjoying this. this and we great. got everything I needed. So, a uh, person pointed <laughs> out that it looked like like a map war room kind of thing. Um, oh. And given that it it was where the gang were clearly hanging out when they were doing all their like, you know, how do we fight the demon king logistics? You know, yeah. it's not the wildest thing in the world. That that makes sense. All right. I Let's... really like the idea that that was specifically like a war room for, for Raru. Yeah. Okay. So let's ask the... Oh. Found our girl. Uh, <clears throat> so let's ask the fundamental question. Are these Zonai ruins? Like, they should be, right? They look so much different from everything else. They do. They, what they look like are the labyrinths. Yeah. But they are also being patrolled by a construct. Excuse you, sir. God, they're so tanky. Excuse me. Sir, we are trying to do archaeology, and you're making that needlessly complicated. All right, we're good. And we're just a little bit on fire. But the fact that there are Zonai constructs defending this place doesn't necessarily mean anything. But it's got that sort of look of the labyrinths, in that it's got these these columns with that sort of ribbed pattern between them? Kind yeah. of? It's like each individual column is squared off, but with sub-columns on the corners. And we had to do... Well, okay, this is pretty telling. This is... That's got the Zonai dragon head stuff that we've seen before. Um, also, we had to use sage powers here to unlock something that I no longer yeah. remember what it was. Um, so, like, this has to be a Zonai ruin. But how old a Zonai ruin? Because this... this would have to be like the oldest stuff, because even the original layer of Zonai stuff in the Forgotten Temple is much more refined than what we're seeing here. Yeah. This is Zonai as we saw them in Breath of the Wild, with all the stuff in like in Theron and 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 here. But it's so different from what we've seen in the sky, in the depths, and everywhere else. It's just, it may as well be so old it's a different civilization entirely. What's interesting to me is that the Zonai were explicitly stated to have descended from the heavens, but this is very yeah. much built with like gravity in mind. And the, yep. the main hallmark of the other Zonai architecture that we've seen is that sort of top heavy wedding cake look that you cannot practically speaking get. Wait, hey, let me up. Uh, that you can't get if you have to build on the ground. This stuff is all very solid and, like, cube-like. Yeah. So, okay. Got <laughs> We've got this, this doofy-ass owl, which very much matches the architecture of the surrounding area. Doesn't look that much like the much more polished owl that we saw in the Spirit Temple with Minoru. In part because it's got this big-ass Bert and Ernie nose, Blue but Bert other knows. than that... Um, <laughs> uh... All right, and we've got rough stonework. We got dragons. Boy, do we got dragons. It's clearly Zonai, but it's just, it's different. Maybe these are the first ones who ever descended, but even then it's like, why are they encumbered by gravity when the Zonai that we're familiar with aren't? Well, that makes me wonder if, uh, cause we've just, we just did a grand tour of a bunch of dungeons that were built by Zonai collaborating with the people of Hyrule. So I'm almost yeah. wondering if this is like, if this could be more of like a cargo cult situation, if this were, if this was people on the ground building something, because they'd been dealing with the Zonai. I don't know, uh, 
Because I am noticing a distinct lack of Zonai text anywhere, which yeah. up until now has been kind of omnipresent. Let's see if there's any research notes we can steal. I mean, understanding that this is a video game and as much thought as they put into Breath of the Wild, a lot of the stuff they created for Tears of the Kingdom was created afterwards. Right. We're basically finding a way within the lore of the game and the tools you've been given to basically retcon why this architecture that they designed in Breath of the Wild before they came up with the concept of the rest of the Zonai can fit with the Zonai aesthetic they decided to go with for everything else here in Tears of the Kingdom. So well, we're we're playing a game like using the rules of real archaeology, trying to solve a somewhat arbitrary problem. And there is probably an answer somewhere, but we, this is the part where we have to recognize, like, okay, video game archaeology, there is a limit to what we can solve using real-world methods because there is a point at which it's just the designer changed their mind between the first and second game. Yeah, but before we go assuming that, the labyrinths. <laughs> the the labyrinths, labyrinths are the most overt Zonai ruins that we had in both games, and the fact is, this is a Zonai ruin. This is 100% a Zonai ruin. Oh, yeah. Um... And we can see a lot of evidence of, like, so the older stonework that we saw in the Forgotten Temple had this specific kind of, like, square meandering pattern uh, set into the floors. The walls have the dragon with, like, sort of the, the spiral pattern that they... Oh, no. That's the spiral pattern they use for representing secret stones, and they are all down the body of their dragons. Mm. <laughs> so that ties in they with knew. the... <laughs> if, you, if, you, if you eat one of those bad boys, stuff happens. Um, so so we've got the hallmarks of the Zonai design that we saw in the Forgotten Temple. Just about the only part it's missing is the top down, uh, the top heavy wedge look, because the, the labyrinths are all aggressively cuboid. Um, but it's got it's got this old rough stonework for the dragon heads, and the uh, it's got that sort of thin pillars within you know, placements of wider pillars that they had all through the uh, Typhlo ruins. And let's just get up, get up top and see, because... Design these... Doc says the name Secret Stone bugs me to no end. It's got big Mount Doom energy for sure. <laughs> I wanted it to be Sacred Stone, and it bothers me that it is secret instead. Yeah. Um, all right, hold on, because there's, there's a few points in the lab. Yeah, okay. So the part of the labyrinth where old Zonai design meets newer Zonai design is, of course, the Oruberos motif. Oh! Mm -hmm. That, hey, so that rune we were looking for? This is two-thirds of it. This is the top and middle part. What? <laughs> Hold on, let me just make sure, let me check what, what my paraglider looks like. Yeah! Yeah, oh, there's, a the final, there's a final, there's a final little swiggle that and isn't on this one. What the fuck is that? <laughs> I don't know. But, each of the labyrinths is like, protected by something that talks to us that's like, I am the god of, like, boars, I'm the god of owls, I'm the mm. god of dragons. If we go to the other two, and they are missing different chunks of this, we will we have evidence. <laughs> we, maybe, but... Okay, and we've got... Yep, these are the Zonai light sources that we've seen. This is the dive point that we saw on the Sky Islands. This whole thing has that... Here we go. This is another one of the cases of the late-stage sand, zen garden, concentric circle thing. And it's embedded in this otherwise much older arrangement yeah. so like this this labyrinth pattern that we saw in the typhal ruins has to be zonai it can't be a cargo cult thing i was wrong about that because that would not make sense for this so it is a zonai ruin but it's not built like the anti-gravity stuff yeah. all right let's go check out so, one of the other sky labyrinths yeah, my whole thing with like the oh we can't completely use real world techniques on a video game is not to say that like this isn't zonai but it's like using purely design language alone right. in a artificial environment will lead us to some pitfalls and assumptions when we try to apply real world rules to a design that is essentially the work of a small team of people consciously creating something and having to change their ideas between games in various yes. ways. So it's not to say that like we can't take it seriously. It's like we have to recognize the question of why does this look different might be like, look, it's still a Zonai Ruin, the designers just changed their mind between the games and they didn't want to redraw the, the the labyrinths. But it is interesting that even within that, the there is consistency between the pattern of the labyrinths on the ground. Because in the first game, there was a ton of thematic consistency between the Zonai... Oh. 
That is an entire stele that is just devoted only to that symbol that we found. God damn it. There's can nothing you, else on can it. Can you interact with it if you go closer? I think there was a treasure chest here once that I already okay. got. Um, oh, no treasure chest stick around. Hmm, then I don't know. I think that might have mm. been where I needed to, like, activate some kind of terminal. Um, all right, let's see. Eflo is canonically Hyrulean. Interesting. All right. This is the same symbol as on the other Oruberos. Okay, uh, it's missing the same part. It's missing the same lower third. So it's yeah. not different depending on which labyrinth you're in. That's that's mm. that's something. Uh, I also did notice when we were looking at... Uh, hold on. Let me just go back over on the map. Uh, when we were looking at the uh, Lome Sky Labyrinth from the top, I was like, wow, from this scale, that meander pa that labyrinth looks a lot like the Zonai... Uh, Great, like the metal grate pattern that they use. It's like, oh yeah, they just fucking put labyrinths in everything, don't they? <laughs> so that's interesting. <laughs> yeah. um, all right. This also looks newer than the rest of the stonework, but not that new. Uh, let's see. Where's the dive point? Um, I will have to hop out in a little bit. All right. Yeah. By the way. No worries. Um, I'll probably. Oh, great. We're getting a blood moon. <laughs> Ugh. Ganon, I am busy. This is scientific inquiry. Yeah. All right. I feel like these places had some kind of, like, prove thy worth or whatever. Like, this is another secret test of character that the zone I did or something. Um, all right. Yeah. Okay, whatever. All right, so this is interesting. Um... Wait, game says Typho is cargo called? That's interesting. Um, the Pharon region also had those Zonai pillars and stuff, right? The the dragons. And there was oh, yeah. that... Um... Yeah. The, in the last game, basically the only three places where you had big Zonai stuff was Pharon, Typho, and the Labyrinth. There's a tiny bit on Whoa. the uh, on the Tabantha Plateau. Damn it. <laughs> I lost the star. Um, the Thundra Plateau had the had those, like, dragon head pillars, right? Uh, yes. Thunder Plateau as well. All right, let's Smaller, just... but yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, this is another little pedestal that has the, um, concentric rings end pattern carved into the stone. Uh, we've got another Ouroboros, and this one also has that top two-thirds of that symbol pattern. I'm starting mm. to think all the Ouroboroses have it. Uh, which is interesting and weird. Um, actually, hold on. Let me just check one thing. All right, after that, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to bounce. The, if we do assume that perhaps it is a loose representation of the stacked masks on the ancient hero aspect, then the bottom third that is missing from the Aruboroses is the boar. Okay. Which, if we take the owl, dragon, boar to mean chunks of the Triforce or slash parts of the trio of protagonists. That would be our two heroes and nothing else. Um, Thunder Plateau. That's the last thing I wanted to check out. Or maybe the Farron region, but probably Thunder Plateau. What the hell is Red, that? I'm going to have to leave this to you. Yes. Good idea. But thank you so much for having me. This was a blast. <laughs> I really enjoyed this. I'm, I'm curious to see what the uh, Zelda community does to untangle this. Yeah, I'm so uh, excited. I'll write a handwritten letter to Zeltic being like, Dear sir... <laughs> Explain. <laughs> help me. <laughs> yes, help, please. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks right. for joining. Sorry you weren't here for the first See seven minutes. See y'all later. All right. No, nah, it's okay. It was like it was like two minutes. All, All right. right. Bye, everybody. All right. Bye. All right, gang. So there's one thing that I've remembered is that in the Farron region. Hold on, before we get struck by lightning. Uh, oh, here's my special hat for this. There we go. Um. So in the Farron region. There is a like a quest line that we've already done uh, to get rid of the storm around the Dragonhead Islands, and it involves these uh, dragon statues with the spikes on it. And these are 100% the same Zonai design. This whole ruin is is the Zonai design that we've seen. And in fact, hold on. Oh no, I thought we had something here. I thought like. I thought the outer stone had cracked away and revealed, like, Zonai runes, but it's just, like, water damage. Eh, ain't that just the way. Um, but this is 
absolutely a classic zone I ruin, obviously. It's got the uh, concentric rings on the ceiling. Um, obviously the dragon, but with spike on So, okay. So, timeline-wise. Obviously the, uh, let me put on the fancy outfit. Um, and I'm going to call this pretty soon afterwards, because I've gotten more than enough for what I need. But, so this is the armor set that you get from this quest line. Uh, and it says, used in ancient rituals made from conducive material, produce electricity during thunderstorms, yada yada. Um, this is Zonai armor. You can tell it's got the, uh, oh my gosh. <laughs> look at the, um, look, the fucking loincloth pattern. That's the, that's, that's the thing that we were trying to figure out. That's the Zonai rune again, but, but in jade and bone, I guess? God, okay. I'm losing my mind, you guys. Uh, I was trying to focus on a completely different other element of this armor set. Um, the fact is, it's designed to look like Farash. Uh, all three of these dragon armor sets are designed to look like the three dragons that resemble the Zonai the most strongly. And the general con accepted fan theory um, is that uh, fucking the reason why Minoru knows about draconification as a forbidden technique is that the three dragons that look like Zonai are three dragons that were once Zonai. Um, and that means that they had to have done the transformation before... Yeah, it's on all of them. Uh, that means they had to have done the transformation before uh, the Zonai all disappeared, obviously. Um, which means that the Zonai civilization existed in parallel with those dragons, and we can assume that these armor sets were uh, sort of made as a result of that? Yep, there it is. Wait, this one's different. Are they all different? This one's got, like, more zhuzh going on downstairs. Also, they've all got that little chest piece that I think is supposed to be a dragon. That little, like, jade symbol. Let me see, does it line up with the... It could theoretically be a slightly squished version of the dragon element of the ancient hero aspect. Um, which is also just on the Zonite armor, so it's not that weird. All right, let's see. So this one, the, the loincloth has like the three extra little wings on the bottom. And those are not present on this one. And they're not present. Yeah, the... The bottom? What the hell? They all sort of look like the symbol. But none of them are quite the same. Huh. Alright, we gotta put on real clothes again. Um. Huh, alright, let's see. My, there it is. Um, hmm. All right. The interesting thing about this to me is that that's Zonai text. So this is, I mean, we know this is Zonai ruin, but it's good to confirm. Zonai text and the guy in the picture is a Hylian. That is 100% a Hylian. So this is from a period in history where the Zonai existed as figures of, like, religious significance to Hylians, and the Hylians participated in these rituals about it. Also, the thing I was getting at with the whole, oh, the dragons coexisted, is that that is the recurring dragon motif that we've seen over and over again, specifically with Farash's horn added on top as like a, a symbol of, yeah, that's, that's what we're looking at. Um, which is interesting and more confirmation of where exactly things line up timeline-wise with each other. Um, oh my gosh, I still can't figure out what that... I mean... The, they all look slightly different, but they all look similar enough to... But not quite? Like, okay, hold on. Yeah, it's not... No, it's very similar. 
you kind of need to follow the lines with your eyes to see that they are like topologically the same rough shape. Um, cause of course the meander pattern on the paraglider is stylized so that basically every angle between the units is a 90 degree angle. Whereas in the actual Jade, like chest or uh, like one cloth shape, it doesn't do that. But, but then why do they all have different little bottom bits? What's happening? I mean, yeah, the Triforce is on the fringe of these armors, but that's like, that's easy mode Zelda symbolism. <laughs> them zone, I love them some triangles. All right, let's put our regular shirt back on. Oh my gosh. Okay. Um, Baron region, where's the, I wanted to check out the Thunder Plateau and I don't remember where that is. Oh wait. Yes, I do. All right. Let's go check out the Thunder Plateau. Ice Dragon has three dots in an upside down triangle. Lightning has three parallel dots. Fire has the back wings. All right. Oh. Gimme. Thank you. Okay. I'm going entirely the wrong direction again. This game gets me turned around like nothing else. Um. I guess a lot of it is that the, um, we could probably get a lot of mileage out of comparing the architecture found within the actual shrine puzzles to the architecture that you find on the Sky Islands. Um, because we're running into, like, older architecture on the ground that clearly predates the disappearance of the rest of the Zonai. And then the stuff we're getting in the shrines, because Raru explicitly built the shrines, that's all much later. That's post Zonai disappearance. You know, I can't help but notice that this thing has uh, head spikes, like the giant skeletons we found in the <clears throat> in the uh, depths. But I'm sure that's fine. All right. So this is a very So basically all of the ruins that were present on the ground in the first game, um, including the Typhlo ruins, the Farosh, the, the, the Faron Woods, and the Labyrinths, they all have this specific kind of pillars with thinner pillars between them, base pattern that gets repeated a bunch, and they all have that extremely stylized dragon head thing. Um, and it's very clearly Zonai. We, we've established that, but it doesn't have the runes, it doesn't have the meander pattern that we're accustomed to. And it doesn't really have the uh, sort of Zonai pattern, zero-G, upside-down wedding cake look that we're, we're used to seeing. Which is interesting. All right. Let's see. Oh, and of course... All right. Yeah. So, like, here on the walls, that's... I mean, this is just more... This is, like, Hyrule. That's much more recent history. But these... Again, this is like the same texture you find on the labyrinth walls. This is the same time period, the same general gist, is really how that looks. And there's, it's kind of hard to like find, I guess, the developmental missing link between all the stuff we're finding on the ground and when the Zonai descended and all the stuff we find on the Sky Island. So like this is right under, huh, didn't realize this is right under Courage Island, that's neat. But like up here, just, you know, your bog standard sky island that descended, um, it looks a lot more polished. Um, maybe those were built by Zonai dissenters? Not sure what that means. Um, okay, so like, so the architecture of the sky islands, you've got this mix of the much more new and polished stuff that came from Rauru's era. All the shrines are surrounded by these rings. This is pristine stone. It's got the gold highlighting that we've seen all over the Temple of Time. Uh, and then it's nestled in this much older looking overgrown ruined stone. Still clearly later stage Zonai because it's got that top down wedge shape, unlike the labyrinths, which are straight up and down. Um, 
And it's got the little Zonai squiggles around the top and all that. And also, clearly, whatever building used to be here uh, is long gone. <laughs> Hold on. It's hard to make out, but I do, in fact, think that the top two chunks of this pillar have that mysterious pattern on them. <laughs> oh no, we've looked at it too closely and now I won't be able to unsee this. I can already feel the conspiracy board unfurling. But yeah, yeah, it's the top part of this stone has the, uh... Ha yep. Let's see. Yeah, it's got that sort of branch with the three lower... Damn it. Branch with the three lower spikes, and then under it, it's got the little double meander. And then the stone below it, even though it's broken, you can see has the uh, the last little swoop and the little little friend up there. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but the dungeon designs, those are all also ancient, and those are pre the Zonai disappearing. But they're clearly newer than this stuff, or at least better preserved? They're certainly newer than the labyrinths, because they've got that polish, they've got the Zonai runes everywhere, they've got that gold inlay pattern that you don't get on the older stonework. Let's see. It's got that wedge pattern. Let me just grab that Sundalion as a treat for later. Um, and then there's stuff like and this is on the- this is the Glide Challenge Island. I almost forgot why we came here, but yeah, this is... This is older, you can tell. This is- this is contemporary with the, uh, stonework around the shrine, not the shrine itself. But these light sources look like they might be newer, or maybe it's just because they're on- they're made of lighter stone. Uh, let's see. This little fella. This could be quite old. It's got that same kind of... The stone's not pristine. It's a little bit overgrown. It doesn't have runes on it or gold inlays, but that's kind of 50-50. Um, let's see. Oh, somebody asked about Zonai pottery. Here's some. And oh god, that looks like the symbol again. <laughs> it's everywhere! Ah! Yep. Alright, cool. Got that out of my system. Like the same rough shape, but it's not quite the same. Alright. I wonder if it'll let us just go up there and stay and not do the timer. Probably not, though. Uh. Hmm. I can feel this rabbit hole taking hold of me. We can't stay here for very much longer. Um. Let's see. Because we spent so much time in the dungeons, and those all feel newer than the Sky Islands, but still. It feels like there was an intentionality here, you know? Like, this this could just be grasping at straws, but it, it feels like stuff was happening here that was thought out. Um, this, again, this looks like the same kind of stonework that we found inside the Forgotten Temple. It's got that same, like, square pattern, and that's, again, what we found on the floors of the labyrinths. Um, and this is some kind of, like, huge, you know, astral observatory sphere or whatever. A very overgrown one. <laughs> Alright, come on. Let's just get out of here. Nope, that's not what I wanted. Hmm. Zonai runes, absolutely everywhere. And that concentric circle pattern, too. Carved into the stone again, not the sort of sand zen garden thing that we find in the shrines. I want to say that, like, most of the Sky Islands feel like they are from roughly the same developmental period. And it's not just because they're all equally weathered and overgrown with, like, yellow foliage. It's just that they're all, they all seem to have been built from roughly the same stone. They all have this same kind of, like, tile square pattern. Um, and then the dungeons feel somewhat newer. 
you know, they, they've got that gold inlay thing that we don't find elsewhere. They've got the, uh, they start incorporating design patterns from creatures found on the ground. I assume. If we assume, if we, if we take as fact the fact that four-eyed camels once roamed the Gerudo Desert, then we can assume that kind of thing. Um... You know, did I just never look at these things closely enough before? Is that Lightcast Island? I think that's gotta be Lightcast Island. I'd place a pin, but I can't. Yep, it's Lightcast Island. Alright, mystery solved. Looks weird as hell because it is. Um. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so... Sky Island architecture might have been from before the Zonai descended onto Hyrule and started hanging out with people. That We can probably assume that. They had to have a civilization before they did that. Um, afterwards, they start building the dungeons. It's got those hallmarks of later design. After that, something happens and they all disappear, except for Raru and Minoru, who continue doing some stuff, but they're mostly focusing their efforts on Hyrule. And we know that the Zonai were around for- were on Hyrule for a while because they were establishing all those mines under Hyrule. We're working with so many stacked ancient histories here that it's really hard to, like, <laughs> keep track of what happened when. Um, anyway, I'm also not the archaeology person, <laughs> so I'm just kind of going down the line of, like, yeah, you can see how they did the walls straight up and down instead of not that. <laughs> As if I know what I'm talking about. Um, anyway, uh, I had a lot of fun doing this little B-roll stream. I'll be snagging this footage and cutting that together uh, later. Today, as soon as that's done. Um, is there anything else I want to check out first? Um, Alright, just one more thing. Because we know Minoru came to Dragonhead Island because she had her stuff set up here. I'm a little curious how she got up here, but I'm going to assume the zone I could just, like, do that. The ancient Sheikah would have been much later than most of this, uh, seeing as they were for the for, like, we have to assume that the ancient Sheikah arose after the founding of Hyrule, since there's no sign of them in, uh, Zelda's flashbacks and memories, which means that that level of ancient, the 10,000 years ago ancient hero aspect, divine beasts, first Great Calamity, Sheikah, is so far past when the Zonai were around that it's not even funny. Because um, the Zonai are already, for the most part, ancient history by the time that um, uh, Zelda appears in the past. We're like four ancient histories ago when we're discussing this stuff. Alright, let's see. It's an interesting kind of just ingrained labyrinthian meander pattern that we haven't seen on other temples. We can assume this is probably contemporary with... It could be contemporary with the spirit temple in the depths. It kind of has that look. At least a little bit. Um... Hmm. Anyway... As I was saying before I got distracted by my own brain, um, I'm gonna stop streaming in a minute and you let this video process download it and finish that video I was working on. <laughs> I'm excited and I think it's going to be fun. Um, okay, sorry, one last thing. We have to assume that these device dispensers were built for just general public use at the height of the Zonai civilization because it's clear that the main way that the Zonai got between Sky Islands was building stuff that would take them there. So anywhere that one of these existed was probably, like, kind of a transit hub. Oh! And that's another Farage head very specifically. So this place was built after Farage's whole deal. I should probably put on my lightning-proof helmet. Or I could not do that and say I did. Um, <sighs> Dang it. This is such a cool rabbit hole. The amount of design that had to go into this to purposefully create an entire civilization 
through like three different eras of construction. Oops, hold on. <clears throat> it's lightning proof hat time. Uh, <laughs> to the degree that I actually can do this level of like analysis is very interesting to me. Um, and this has that sort of shape of the top of the Temple of Time. So they're all very clearly like in conversation with each other. Okay, I gotta fucking, excuse me. <clears throat> all right. Goodbye, dra uh, Dragon Island thingies. We're gonna go do whatever's on the ground over here and I'm gonna end this stream in a minute. Okay, great, fantastic. I've escaped the allure of fictional archeology span and I'm sure absolutely nothing All right, well, I'll talk to you guys later. <laughs>